Hello, my name is Rebecca and I am a youth services librarian with the Pierce County Library System. We are doing a series of early learning math videos for educators. This video is on prediction. I will go through a few examples of how to add prediction questions to the, the books that we read aloud to our classes or one-on-one. -on -one. I will also talk a little bit about patterns and estimation. So one tool mathematicians use to get them started on problem solving is making predictions and then changing their thinking when the evidence they gather doesn't match their prediction. So when we read books, we can look at the cover and title and also make predictions about what we think will happen in the book. As we read and learn more information, our guesses or predictions might develop or change. That's okay. Mathematicians and scientists must be able to adapt. And the process of gathering the clues and thinking through the possibilities is the important part, not that they were able to predict correctly. Kids can do this with a lot of encouragement and positivity. Okay, so I have a few examples of books that I had here at my house that we can kind of try and look at the covers and the titles and talk about what we might see and how we might talk about um, what predictions we have about what will happen. Um, we're not gonna read these entire books or anything. Um, and I just wanna emphasize that uh, these kind of types of questions could be um, used with hopefully any book that you might have on your shelf and getting kids to think in that um, kind of mathematical way of predicting what might happen. Um, so the first book I have here is The Day, Be Day You Begin by Jacqueline Woodson. What types of things do you notice when I hold this book up? What do you see? Some answers might be, looks like a ruler here. Is she opening a door and peeking through? What expression does she have on her face? Is she looking excited? What feelings does she have? Maybe nervous? She has a book in her hand here. And the title, The Day You Begin. Ooh, is she gonna start something new? What might she be going to that might be new for her? Where is she entering? What is this door she's walking through? What do you think? What does it make you wonder about? When you start something new, how do you feel about it? Does it make you feel nervous or excited or afraid or um, full of anticipation? How does it make you feel? This page makes me wonder about what door she's walking through. But I also see this ruler here and the book. And it makes me wonder if she's starting a new class. These could be things that they're saying or the teacher's saying. Again, give them some time to think. Um, and as you start reading the book, you might see if you're correct, if you're not correct, you might start changing your prediction. Um, but there's lots of things to notice just from the cover. All right, that's one example. All right, the second book is Don't Wake Up the Tiger by Britta Teckentrup. I'm not sure if I'm saying that author's name right. Um, but this is called Don't Wake Up the Tiger. So some things we could talk about is what we see here. So the tiger looks like it's asleep. Um, there's also this little mouse with a balloon. And then we could start bringing in what types of ideas we might have about, uh, about what a tiger is like in the first place. Do you think a mouse would typically be afraid of a tiger? What do you think is gonna happen? And why is the mouse holding a balloon? What does it make you wonder about? Do you think they don't wanna wake up the tiger, it looks like, I wonder why. Do you think they're afraid of the tiger? Hmm, there's so many things we could try and, and think about and ask. And as we go through the story, um, there's kind of a surprise ending and this one will be a good one because I doubt they would guess that it's the tiger's birthday. How exciting. Okay. <laughs> I shouldn't have told you that. <laughs> okay. The third book I'll show 
is This Beach is Loud by Samantha Cotterell. And there's a glare there, but um, this book has a lot going on on the cover. And the title is This Beach is Loud, which makes me think, and then the kid is holding his hands over his ears, which makes me think he might be kind of bothered by the noise. What do you think? What else do you notice? You might see he's got a pail here and it looks like a little shark in his lap. But he's sitting on the beach. There's a bunch of people in the background and there's beach umbrellas. There's birds in the sky. What other things could be making noise when you're on a beach? What do you think he's, why do you think he's being bothered by the sounds? What could it be? This beach is loud. Give him lots of chances to kind of think through what could be loud, what could be bothering the kid. Um, what ways, uh, what are some things they could do um, to kind of help make the noises not feel so, so, um, so loud or so bothersome maybe? What are some things the kids do um, when they are bothered by noise? What are some ways they might be able to calm themselves down? So then you could look through it and see if any of the things they even do would be things that could happen in the book. Um, what would they predict this kid in particular would do? Um, okay, so that's the third book I have right now. Let's now talk about patterns. Um, this I see as closely related to making predictions uh, because you're looking at the way things are and figuring out the way it should be, how it should continue or what will happen. Um, so here we have a really simple one and we're just looking at colors because they're all stars. So we've got green, red, blue, green, red, blue, green, what comes next? Um, and hopefully we can figure out red, blue. Um, we could do more colors. We could add in different types of shapes and create patterns in that way. Um, you can make it as easy and hard as the kids are ready for. Uh, one book that I wanted to mention that has a, uh, um, that's really fun for kids, I think, and that I highly recommend, Press Here by Hervé Toulet. And this particular page right here these colors have been in a pattern, but now it says, hold on, two of those dots seem to have switched places, but which ones? Let's look. We've got red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, yellow, blue, red, blue, yellow. We figured it out right here. Those are the culprits. That's a fun book. Press here, Hervé Toulet. The final concept I want to talk about a little bit is estimation and having kids estimate in class. Um, and I think you could do some really fun activities with that. Um, for one example would be to have the kids think about or estimate how many steps it would take to get from where they are. You could put a tape down or something from where they are to get to the door. And once they they estimate that and figure out if they were if they were too high or too low or just right on, um, then from there you could say now let's estimate how many steps from the door to the bookshelf. Now, do we think that looks further away than where we were the last time? Is that going to be more steps or less steps? Um, and then you could keep going from there um, and use that idea in a variety of different ways. Um, so estimation to me is similar in the sense that you are kind of anticipating what the answer is, you learn from it, and then you can make a more educated guess. Um, so uh, another possible activity you could do in the class would be something like um, trying to figure out or predict what uh, what flavor ice cream is the most favorite in your class. So you could have a few options like chocolate, vanilla, strawberry only, 
and then have the kids tell you in secret and then have them predict what the what the flavor they think would be the most popular um something like that it wouldn't have to be the flavor of ice cream but you know you get the idea i think um another thing you could do in class would be to fill a jar or something with crayons or whatever you have on on hand um and have them guess or estimate how many how many crayons are in there now once they find that out you could have a bigger jar and then say we learned this many crayons fit in this jar so do we think it's, the number's gonna be higher in this jar? Um, so those were a few ideas. Um, hopefully you see the connection here as well. Um, and we'd love, to, we'd love to know how everything goes. Um, and I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.